Hi, I'm Paul Wank, and I'm the Midwest rep for Pathfinder Systems. Um, I've been with Pathfinder for since 2008, and before that, for 30 years, I was in the concrete block industry. So um, I've struggled with a lot of the things that you guys have are struggling with now, and we're trying to provide you some systems that can offer you some help. Um, be sure to stick around to the last presentation. It'll be Larry, and he's got a new product to show you. So, whoop. <laughs> Always technical difficulties on all these. Paul, if you go back to that main slide, try clicking right on the video there. You should be able to get it to run. I thought that was our quick mold change. <laughs> <laughs> quick page change, at least. So you're looking at a Tiger Model S6 that's making 12 four-inch block at a time. This particular machine is averaging about 540 cycles an hour. So that's 6,484 inch an hour. The Model S replaced an outdated cam operated six at a time machine. And it used the existing foundation and the existing molds. It also has quick mold and quick height change ability. So you can easily run a wide range of high quality products. So let's see how it does that. Okay. Here's the machine with the mold cradle extended, ready for a new mold. This is the mold with the quick clamp head frame and the standard vibrators ready to go in. We place the mold in the cradle and then it's pulled into the machine. The head is automatically clamped. There's no bolting. The mold locks are hydraulically rotated inward to clamp the mold. We still need to put the vibrator belts on by hand, but the vibrator motors are lifted by a hydraulic cylinder, not by hand. So it's faster, easier, and safer. The feed time, compaction time, delivery speed, and all other settings are stored in a recipe for this mold. The recipe number is called up on the touch screen. And now we're running. It's actually running a little faster than that. Sometimes it's coming out a little slowly. Some of the interesting features are the agitator drive arms are above the feed drawer where the material can't wear them out. The agitator drive speed is adjustable via the touch screen. The mold and the pallet are supported by a thick plate that protects the rubbers and doesn't allow any pallet deflection. This really helps prevent cracking on low height products like retaining wall caps. These airbags are on the top of all four corners of the mold. They help keep the mold clamped to the pallet and they allow you to tip the mold slightly to the front or rear by increasing or decreasing the air pressure from the touch screen while, even while the machine's running. No trying to remember which way to turn the bolts to tip the table. This setting is also stored in the recipe with, the, with this product. The vibrators are driven by servo motors to help keep them synchronized and allow easy vibrator speed changes. Here's a picture of the graphic operator terminal or GOT screen. This is a touch screen where you set up the vibrator speeds for each part of the cycle. This again stays in the recipe for this product. You can set up or adjust delivery speed from this screen. If you're making something fragile like knockout block, you can adjust the pallet delivery arm so you can go slower for those products and faster for the products that can handle higher speeds. That setting then stays with the recipe for that product. Every stroke, head up, down, table up, down, feed drawer forward and reverse is set up the same way and can be different for each product. 
And here's the home screen. This four at a time Model S is consistently running seven and a half second cycles. Let's do a height change to six inch high. This slide shows the height stops, two for the head frame and two for the pallet table. You change the table or the lower stops. You change the head or upper stops. You put the six inch high mold in and select the recipe for the product. And now we're running six inch high wall block. No other adjustments are required. That's just how easy it is for all height changes on the Model S and it took only minutes. So if you want some fast, flexible, high quality production, contact Pathfinder Systems to learn more about the Tiger Model S or to arrange a plant visit to see one in operation. Hey Paul, thanks for the presentation. We definitely learned a lot here. I do have a few questions from you, for you. Um, on one of the slides, you showed a seven and a half second cycle time. I believe that was on the four to time out there. Uh, certainly we have other machines running in the field faster. Why is that one running about seven and a half seconds? Sure, that Model S4 replaced a machine that was actually running a bit slower. This is the maximum speed their Cuber can keep up with and they're currently reviewing some options to cube faster. They did replace the mixer with a faster Tika turbine style mixer. So the machine isn't waiting for material and the mixing will keep up with the higher speeds. The customer is still benefiting from the quick mold and quick height changes. This is a two machine plant and they're actually getting so much more production that they're considering removing the other machine and putting the second cuber on this line for two cubers to get the maximum speed out of this uh, machine. That would allow them to run at up to 10 cycles a minute. A set, a minute. Great. Uh, for anybody out there who's considering a Model S and replacing an existing machine, what other changes do they have to keep in mind? Uh, very few. You've got to make the, it goes on the same foundation. It uses the same delivery height. It uses the same uh, material feed height and the pellets come in at approximately the same height. So you've just got to make sure that you've got sales guys who can take care of getting rid of all those new extra block you're going to make. Right. We did actually have one question come in. It's a very good question. So I'm going to go ahead and answer that or ask Paul that right now. Brian Langland is asking if the height change is toolless as well. No, you do have to take bolts out. The, the height stops are bolted in. So you do have to remove bolts uh, and then bolt the new, new height stop back in. Great. Thanks, Paul. Um, if there's no other questions at the time, and of course you can continue to type your questions in as we go, we will work on answering all those questions either behind each presentation or at the very end there. Uh, but I think we can move on.